Guys, let's cut the bowl and call it what it is. Nancy Pelosi's trip to Taiwan is American hypocrisy at its best. It's hypocrisy, pure and simple. Why? Because 40 years ago, the United States signed three legally binding treaties with China to recognize Beijing over Taipei as the sole legal government of China. The U.S. acknowledges that Taiwan is part of China, and Washington will only keep, quote, unofficial relations with Taiwan. And then comes Nancy Pelosi, one of the most official public figures in the United States. That is the Speaker of the House, the second in line for U.S. presidency, visiting Taipei and shaking hands with the leaders of Taiwan. Guys, this is betrayal. This is provocation. And this could be war. I'm not even kidding. Beijing has had it. It's not the first time the U.S. government promised one thing on Taiwan and did another. After the first two Sino-U.S. communiques were signed to establish diplomatic relations, U.S. Congress passed the so-called Taiwan Relations Act, which in many ways contradicted the letter, the spirit, and the intent of the first two Sino-U.S. communiques. For example, it allowed arms sales to Taiwan and says the U.S. can intervene militarily in the island's self-defense. But excuse me, didn't you just acknowledge that Taiwan is part of China? A sovereign nation whose internal affairs are to be respected? And then came the third China-U.S. communique of 1982, where Washington promised, once again, nice things, saying it does not seek to carry out a long-term policy of arms sales to Taiwan, and that the quality and quantity of the arms will reduce over time. But then, in an ultimate about face, the U.S., without consulting with the PRC, issued the so-called the Six Assurances to Taiwan, which said the U.S. would not set a date for termination of arms sales to Taiwan. And they added, there has been no change in our long-standing position on the issue of sovereignty over Taiwan. What on earth is that supposed to mean? Now, you know who's the grandmaster of double beating. One justification for Pelosi's trip to Taiwan and for America's strategic ambiguity over the past decades is ever-increasing Chinese aggression. Apparently, some folks suffered from amnesia. It's not Beijing who started all this. In June 1950, when the Chinese Civil War was getting closer to be settled, with the losing Chinese KMT retreated to Taiwan, then U.S. President Harry Truman sent the Seventh Fleet to the Taiwan Straits to stop the winning Communist Party's advances to regain the island thereby forestalling the Chinese reunification. To a large extent, it was the Cold War and the hawkish U.S. posture that caused the separation of Chinese on both sides of Taiwan Straits, which had been won for centuries. Now, China is blamed for being aggressive as he seeks reunification, blamed by the very country who aggressively sabotaged the Chinese reunification in the first place. How hypocritical is that? Pelosi's trip happened a few months before midterm elections, where her Democrats are forecast to have a mere 17% chance to retain the House. The trip is seen by many as Pelosi's desperate attempt to rally domestic support. And it happened also at a time when very little consensus can be reached between the Democrats and the Republicans on guns, abortion, and spending. So, defending Taiwan and being tough on China is one of the very few common denominators in a divided Congress.